What sort of things are happening at the centre on a week-to-week -week basis? What do they do? Hmm. Well, they're film shows. Well, there's a film show every week and special ship film shows for kids. <coughs> there are uh, conferences. Uh, there was an inter-Caribbean conference went on not long ago where people from all islands came over and they held it in the main hall. There's also a conference room within the centre for smaller conferences. Um, there are weddings, there are uh, dances and dinners. It's a multi-purpose venue, you know, it's for almost anything. What I still have to do is to put a frieze around the walls of the building with the handprints of the principal artists who helped me in this project, starting with Paul McCartney and Elton John and Sting and Mark Knopfler and Eric Clapton, Phil Collins and so on. And we'll have all their hands in, in the walls. In the main entrance foyer, which is quite a large room, we will have a rolling display of the artists who appeared at Air Studios in the 10 years that we were there. Mm. So that kind of thing will be an attraction for tourists. Chris Ransiman a big part of this project. Absolutely. When did you first meet Chris and how did he get involved with this? I got involved with him through my friends and in the business, like Dave Harris, who said, this is a guy who, who knows more about putting on shows technically than anybody and he'd be a great help to you. When I, when I contacted him, I asked him, I said, would you help us to get this organized as a, as a venue? Because all we did was build an empty shell of a building. And Chris Runciman was the person to advise us on that. And he worked incredibly hard. Several years ago, Total Production played a small part in the project by raising the profile of the Montserrat Equipment Quest. Companies such as Entec, Averlights and Yamaha Commercial Audio were among those who came forward to lend their support to the centre. The whole place has been completed and equipped thanks to some great people in your business. Yamaha have been wonderful, absolutely marvellous, because when I went to them and said, look, we're desperate to get some good stuff into this place, and will you help us? And Nick Cox thought about it and went away and talked to all his geniuses up, and up there and called me in a week or so later and said, we've got a plan for you. And he gave me um, a demonstration. Somebody had uh, concocted um, a program on, on, a, on a computer which showed a screen which, they, which they'd actually got the dimensions of, and the plans of our, the cultural center and they worked out what was necessary. And, and they were able to rotate this building in, you know, in, in the computer and say, well, we, this is what we think we need. And then they started listing the number of loudspeakers, which I think amounted to 32. And they started listing the desks that we would need for one thing or another, for a playback or for cinema and so on. And I, my, my jaw dropped because it was like building a studio again. And so they gave us some fantastic equipment, which turned our, our um, theatre into probably the finest sound theatre in the West Indies. No, you can't fault Yamaha, they've, they've been absolutely fantastic. Finally, I asked Sir George if he thought the likes of Sting, Paul McCartney, Elton John, Mark Knopfler and other classic Air Montserrat recording artists might be gracing the stage at the new cultural centre at some point in the future. I haven't asked them to be honest. I've been reluctant to go back and say, Elton, would you do another concert for us? It's a different thing, it's not doing it for a charity, it's doing it really to try and get people to be aware of Montserrat, which is great. So I, I, I hate sort of trading on my friendship. Mm. I might do one day. I might ask them.